I did a video about a year ago about scraping Indeed, and since then, although the front looks the same, the actual HTML underneath has changed, so we need to update the selectors so we can still get the data from that site, and in this video, I'm gonna do just that. So I am using request HTML. If you don't have it, you'll need to pip install it. I like it because it has requests and HTML parsing all in one. We're gonna need a few functions for this. I'm going to use a function to get the data, one to pass it and one to export it. So let's start with our get data function. We're gonna give it a session object. We're gonna create that further down and then we're gonna give it a URL. And from here, we're gonna do r is equal to s.get the URL information. We're gonna use a session so we can reuse the underlying TCP IP connection just to make it all a bit neater. Then we're gonna return out some information. We're then gonna have a pass function, so I'll call this one pass HTML, and we'll be giving it some kind of HTML. Then we're gonna have our main function, and this is going to run everything. This is quite common practice in Python to do this. You have your functions to do something, then you have your main function that will run it, and then in, we will have our if name is equal to main, we can then run the main function. This just makes it nice and easy for us to see what's going on and also allows it so that this parts of this function could parts of this code could be called for elsewhere and we wouldn't run all of it unless we run directly in the script. Getting data like I am here is all well and good, but if you'd like to learn how to do something with that data, then I'd highly recommend checking out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that focuses on learning interactively, giving you practice with real problems to help train your brain, critical thinking and problem solving skills. It's for all abilities and levels, so even if you're brand new, you'll be guided through using fun problems. Their learning path for data science foundations would be a great place to start for anyone looking to work with data, as it guides you through probability and statistics before looking into neural networks. Brilliant's hands-on approach to learning makes it much more fun too, and giving you problems to solve interactively is a great way to get information to stick, as we learn by doing instead of just memorising. There are also fun and interactive courses in maths, science and computer science that will help you learn more effectively than just watching lectures. So if you'd like to check it out, visit brilliant.org slash John Watson Rooney to get started for free. And the first 200 people will also get 20% off an annual membership. So thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. So let's create our session object. So let's have our session is equal to our HTML session that we've imported at the top and the URL, which we'll grab just now. Let's save that. So this is the site as it looks now. Let's grab this part, and this is gonna become our URL for now. Let's save that. So what we wanna do now is we wanna think about what information we wanna get out of our get data function. Well, we definitely wanna return some elements, a list of elements that has the HTML in it that we can pass. So we can then use this function as we loop through each one. So let's go back here, use the inspect element tool and hover over the first job, and then go back up until the whole thing's kind of highlighted. Let's look for something we can actually use. And we have this job scene uh, beacon. So if we search for that, we should get this one here. Now you can see we're getting something like 15 here. Now that looks about right to me. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to return out here r.html.find, then the div of this that we got. Let's save it and test it now with our session and our URL. So let's just print out whatever we get, our get data with our session that we created, and then the URL that we got here. So basically this is just gonna print out whatever comes out of this function. This should be a list of elements, which it is, you can see them there. Each one of these elements has the HTML in it that we can pass out. So let's do that part now. Let's say that we want to return a dictionary. So I want a dictionary with the information in that we can then do something with. So let's say this is going to be our job dictionary like this. So let's say we want a title to start with. So because we are giving it the HTML, we just need to do our HTML here dot find, and then we can search for the selector. If I come back here, hover over, you'll see we have this an H2 and an A tag that has the text in. You'll see it's in a span ID down here but we can go for this a tag, we'll get everything underneath. Because this is the first h2 and then the first a, 
makes our selector nice and easy. We can just do H2, first A. We're going to index the first one because this will always return a list dot text like this. Great. So let's test that this actually works. Let's return out the job dictionary. And instead of printing out all of the elements, let's save them in jobs like this. And then we can loop through it for job in jobs like this. We can then print out whatever comes out of our pass HTML function for this piece of HTML. Let's run. We should get a load of titles. So that's great. We have some of the starting information coming through for all the jobs that are on that page. But we're going to want to expand this. So let's say we want to grab the link to the job. Now I found this one quite interesting because if you look here, it does indeed give you a list, a link rather, but it's a rather odd looking link. But if you open the actual link up from the UI, you'll see, just paste this one in, you'll see we get back to where we want it to be. Now this ID, I'm gonna copy all of this now and put this in my code actually. Let's put this here for now, safekeeping. This ID actually is shown here. This is exactly it. And this attribute in the same selector we were looking at. So what we can do is we can then just basically copy this part here, remove the ID because that's for that specific one, and then concatenate it together with the attribute ATTRs of data-jk. And we're just constructing the actual link to the site, the, the job description itself here. Now, if you wanted to, you could go to each one of these pages and get more information, but we're just going to take the surface level info. Let's run this to make sure I haven't done anything wrong. And we get a load of links too. We try and open this one. You'll see we get this job here. All good. Okay, let's get some more information then. Let's add something else in. Let's add the company name over here. You'll see it's this. And we just have a span class company name, nice and easy. So we can do html.find span.company name, index the first one, which will, it will be dot text done. Then we'll have the snippet. This is the, uh, the long load of bit of information. So we'll do html.find and we'll go grab the selector for this as well. That is here. So this is this kind of like bit of info down here keep going div class job snippet there we go that one looks good div dot let's index the first one do dot text let's save it let's run this again just make sure we're getting all that information that we're looking for yep we are perfect now i want to include the salary estimates but you'll see that they don't all have that salary estimate so what we're going to do is we'll find the selector for it somewhere under here there we go uh, we should work this one should be fine let's go for this one that one looks too uh, uh, common so we'll copy this one but what we're going to do is we're not going to put it in here we're going to say try and we're going to try and add it so we'll try to add the, into our job the salary and that's going to be equal to html.find and this was my selector was it a div it was indeed div dot and we can close up these with a dot. And again, we want our zero dot text. Now, if this fails, we want to do accept and it will fail on an index error. Um, index error. And what we'll do is we'll print out the error and we will then say that our actual job salary, so our dictionary is the same, is equal to none given. So this is basically just trying to let's spell salary right for a start. There we go. This is basically just going to try to add it. And if it can find it, it will. Otherwise, it's going to run this code. It's going to add non-given. So we get the same amount of information in our dictionary. So let's try running this now. We get no errors, except here's our list out of range. This one didn't have one. And there's our non-given. So we know that it's working. Great, now that I'm happy that we have our passing of the information, our getting of the information, let's work on the working our way through all the pages. So let's go and have a look at the pagination. 
So the last page looks like this. So if I go back one, you'll notice that we have this next page button here. So if we hover over it, we'll see that we do have this UL class pagination list and then this uh, a, a here, this A tag. Now this is just the actual image, the SVG image, so we can ignore that. What we can do is we can actually go ahead and use this and this is actually has the href in so we can follow it if you like we can follow it along each time using a while loop which will mean we don't have to put a number in for the um, the start number that was in the url this is a bit neater and what we'll do is when we don't find this element on the page we'll break out of our loop so i'm going to copy this ul class pagination list and we want the a with the i'm going to say this is probably the easiest one to get aria label next so let's try getting that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into my get data function and I'm going to turn this into returning a tuple. So we'll do r.html.find and it was ul.this and then a aria dash, oh, didn't mean to do that, label was equal to next like this. So this should now return a tuple and we can actually then do something with this part here. Now because I've made this a tuple we need to make sure we change this part here. So our tuple HTML for our jobs is now going to be on the first index. All we need to do is we need to do this here. So let's check that that still works, which it does. And what we'll do is we'll print out as well jobs and we'll go for the second in the first index or the second thing. Okay, so let's try that. There's our data and here is the element that has the next page in it. Now you'll see that this is a list. So what we're actually going to have to do is index this again to give us the first item in that list. Then ask for the attributes and we'll have the href like this. Let's try that. There we go. So this has given us this part of the URL for the next page. So we can definitely work with that the URL to make this into a full uh, URL. So let's do this or concatenate those two together. And this should give us that full URL there. Brilliant. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work our way through the uh, all of the information with this while loop. So let's construct it up here. So let's say while true, because we want this to run because we're going to break out of it. We'll say that our jobs is going to be equal to this. We're going to need to amend this slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is going to be our base URL to give us something we can work from here. I'm going to be consistent with my quote marks. Then we're going to say we're going to remove this part here because we're going to add these two together. So our starting URL is going to be base URL plus this URL. Now this is important because every loop, every iteration through this loop, we're going to change this URL variable. So what we're going to say is instead of printing this out, let's move this inside our while loop. Instead of printing this, we're going to say our new URL is going to be equal to this or rather just our base URL, please, plus this. So let's print it out as we go through and we should be able to then see all of the jobs from each page coming through. So let's try this and I'll probably have to stop this myself. Okay, I made a mistake. So what I've done is I've actually concatenated this together here, which isn't correct. Um, this is basically adding these two together. So what I really need to do is say that our base URL, our original URL is gonna be this up here instead like this. So this means that our first one will be this and the second time we go around we've already concatenated it or you could do it the other way around and have the base URL here and remove it from there. Let's do it like this and we can see all of the jobs coming through. This is going through every single page and there we go. So we've now hit our index error list is out of range which means it's, it's got to the last page and it's not actually found. Uh, we've got an extra page now. It's not actually found the next button to go, so it's failed. So what we need to do here is just add in a try and accept, which is also how we're going to break out of this loop. 
So I'm going to put it here. We'll do try this. We'll try to, I need to be over here, please. We'll try to do this and we'll print it out if it's successful. And then we'll say accept, and it was an index error as ERR. We'll print out the error and then we will also break out of the loop like this. So this is one way of doing pagination. I generally don't like while loops so much, but it does work in this case where you do have the URL in the href of the next page button and you can follow it along like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print out slightly less information. That's, I think we should be able to do this. And we're getting them all through. Now we should get a nice neat end here where it just says break, uh, list index out of range, all good. So we ended up on this page here with all these jobs. So we're getting somewhere now and you can see how it's all starting to come together. The final thing that I want to do is actually export this out to a CSV so we can look at them later. So I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to do it up here. We'll say uh, DF and we'll call this export. Um, and then we want to pass in some results. And then we'll do pass for the moment because up here I'm going to create my main results. Let's put it above the session, our results list like this. And instead of uh, printing this out, we can do results dot append what comes out of here. Pass results. Let's remove this part because we don't want just to append that. There we go. So every loop through, we're going to append to our main list, all of the job information. So from here, what we want to do is import CSV. You don't need that. I must have fat fingered that. Import CSV. And inside our export results now, we can want <clears throat> we can use the first line of the dictionary, the keys, to create the header for the CSV file. So we'll do keys is equal to the results list that we're going to give it, the first uh, uh, the first item in the list dot keys. So this is going to give us keys. Each one of these for the first item. It doesn't matter that it's the first item. We don't want the data, we just want the keys. From here, we can do with open, and we'll call this results.csv, and we need to be able to write to this, write as f, and let's call this dict writer is equal to csv.dict writer, and we're gonna give it the file and the keys. It's gonna write this dictionary, and then we can do dict writer dot write header to write the header row, and then dict writer dot write rows rows there we go this is basically just going to construct that csv file for us so all we need to do now is come to the very end of our end our main function and run export on our results list results there we go let's go ahead and run this now and we're going to get we're getting this because i've left that in up here i'll remove that and i've also forgot to put in what we're actually writing, which was the results, my bad. I'm gonna remove this print statement for this error, which means this is gonna go grayed out, but I think this is okay for now. So let's run it again. We should just get a load of pages, perfect. You can see the start number going up, that's every URL that we're grabbing until list index out of range, which is exactly what we wanted. Let's open up our uh, Explorer and we should have some results. There we go. And there's all the results that we've got. We've pulled all this information in i don't know a couple of seconds from indeed now this is pretty cool i hope you've enjoyed it if you have i think you're going to like this video here which talks about a different method of web scraping data